Welcome back to the channel. Today has been a really exhausting day. Let me show you why. This is why. These are the parts I bought to build the exhaust system. And you may be wondering, why don't I just take it to an exhaust shop and have them weld one up? I could be there a couple of hours, leave and have it. That's true, I could. But the exhaust system that they're gonna put in is not gonna be exactly what I want. Uh, it's not gonna have mandrel bents, which you may be thinking, okay, it's a stock engine, what difference does it make? And you may be you may be right there, but down the road we may change our mind and do some things to the engine. This kit uh, is all man two and a half inch mandrel bent, which means all the, the turns and the twists and the curves are the exact same diameter as the ends. There are typical exhaust shops when they bend a pipe, it really squeezes down the uh, 45 degrees and the 90 degrees by at least half an inch. And that can really choke your, your system up. Uh, this system is probably way more than I need. Uh, there are four parts uh, of each section, the 45s, 180s, 90s, and straights. There's four of each. You can buy kits that have two of each, which probably was enough, but I wanted to make sure I had plenty in case I made some mistakes. If nothing else, I've got extra parts for the next system I build. That whole kit was only about 175 bucks. The exhaust tips, or off of a 96 Ford Mustang. They're stainless and they're nice. My X-Pipe is an Amazon special. It was only about 25 bucks. Uh, the mufflers are Thrush Turbo Style mufflers. And I think I paid about $30 a piece for those. The manifolds. While I didn't show the exact modifications or make a, a film of, or make a video of how I modified them, I can show you some pictures and it'll give you an idea of what I did to the manifolds. In short, what I did was all the mounting bosses, like for the exhaust shields, I ground them off. Uh, it left a little hole on this side. This is the passenger side. And this is where your EGR connected uh, for your emissions. And once you cut that off, it left an, uh, a rectangular hole. I just welded a piece of steel over it, ground it down, painted it flat black. When it comes to the downpipe, this is the original downpipe, and it's got, there's your uh, O2 bung. Uh, and I simply ground down around the edge here uh, to minimize the flange that was on it. It still has the same angle that the truck flange has. I just repositioned this pipe just a bit and welded it in place. On the driver's side, uh, you have to just cut off this outer edge. And that outer edge is what would make contact with the frame. So if you look at it like this, it's very flush. There, there would have been a protrusion right there. You can see where the other two bolts are uh, that came out right there. And that would have made contact with the frame. Simply cut that off and welded it up. Uh, again, this is the downpipe with the O2 uh, connector right here, for the O2 sensor. And I just cut the pipe off short about an inch from the from the flange here, repositioned the the downpipe with the O2 sensor at the angle I needed, it welded it in place and painted them. And they look like uh, nice shorty heathers. Uh, they're a little heavy, but lighter than they were before and they will do the job. This is a picture of the passenger side exhaust manifold before modifications. This is a shot of the same manifold showing the areas that need to be ground down or cut off. I'll show you a little closer example here in the flange, what it looks like. And this is the area that needs to be trimmed down and not altered beyond that. A closer view of the emissions port and the heat shield mounting points. And in this area you see what needs to be ground away. Here's the welded up manifold with the modifications showing everything's mount ground down and an installation of short fits and finally painted ready for final install. This is the driver's side showing the areas that needed to be ground down and already cut down at this point and then with some paint and finally ready for install. So now we're just going to get under the truck and start the process of trying to piece together what we want to have and build our own custom exhaust. It's going to have, obviously, two mufflers, X-pipe. So I'm going to get underneath the truck now, start measuring, piecing together what we're going to need to start making this exhaust flow. 
Okay, when you start building your exhaust, you're gonna need some tools to do that with. And usually you can use a four and a half inch cutoff wheel, which is what I used on uh, building the exhaust uh, initially for the blue truck. Uh, it went through four revisions, which was very time consuming. And then I ended up going to an exhaust shop to build the back half of it. Uh, to avoid the issues that I had with that, uh, and decided to invest in a little tool that will help make cutting the pipe a lot easier. When you're trying to cut two and a half inch pipe with a four and a half inch grinder, it's difficult to get a perfectly flat cut that goes all the way through the metal. The best way to do that is with a bandsaw. Well, I have a handheld bandsaw. The problem is getting a straight line exactly where you want it on the pipe by clamping the device is nearly impossible. What you really need is an upright bandsaw that's mounted and has a fixed blade that runs up and down. Well, there's a cool tool and I'm not getting paid for this. I'm just showing you what I've found and I think this is gonna work really good. We're gonna take a few minutes and put this together. It is a steel, heavy duty, made in USA stand for your handheld bandsaw. Now this is a Bauer. Uh, this is adaptable to a variety of models. So check out their website. Uh, it's, it's swagoffroad.com and see if it'll fit the one you've got. Or if you plan on buying one, now's a good time. Uh, to run the saw, instead of holding the trigger, I just bought a simple uh, pedal activated switch, plugs into the wall, then your unit plugs into that. Uh, 20 bucks off of Amazon. Swag unit, uh, got it the other day. I have not even opened it yet to take a look at it. It's all steel, shouldn't take but a couple of minutes to put it together, but I wanna show you what it looks like and then we'll set it up with the bandsaw so that when we start cutting pipe, it'll be a lot easier than trying to use that grinder. Also, also an advantage is, instead of using that grinder, which sends a lot of sparks, which is sending a lot of dust, metal dust all over your shop, the handheld bandsaw runs at a slower speed, doesn't create the sparks, doesn't create near the mess and makes a thinner cut than your uh, cutoff wheel would make. So let's put this together and see how it works. And this is the really cool part of the whole system. Once you bolt it together, which is pretty straightforward, this particular die cut piece has specific mounting points for various bandsaws. So this particular bandsaw is gonna mount up to this, which fits into the top and holds it at the correct angle and holds it, holds it safely and sturdy. Pretty cool. Looking at the directions, it shows you based on the type of saw you have, which holes to use to mount it. It took about 20 minutes to put this together. Not a big deal. You have the top surface and then the two sides and the plate that actually mounts to the saw, which when you put it into the top has one uh, threaded knob from the bottom that holds it in place. So it's all very sturdy. Very thick stuff, very heavy duty, very nice. Uh, the little legs have a, uh, are bent 90 degrees at the bottom with holes. So if you wanted to mount this to a workbench, uh, if you're working on bigger projects, pushing on it, it wouldn't move around. Uh, it gave you a number of supplied bolts uh, and there's a variety of holes here. Let me give you a little close up, a better look at this. Okay, now here you look at the top of the saw. You can see the top plate 
has a variety of holes and it fits a variety of different styles of saws. And this particular saw being a Harbor Freight, it gives you the model numbers and everything, it has two, two uh, Allen headed bolts right there that hold it in place. This whole plate goes on the top, you can see the, the cutout, and there's a knob from the bottom uh, that has a washer that keeps it from uh, protruding through the top, holds this in place. Each of the sides here have two bolts with threaded nylon inserts to hold it in place. Very sturdy, very nice, uh, looks good. Uh, I attached my uh, foot pedal in place, so let's see how it works. And it works like it should. Can't wait to try this out. So if you're in the market for a tool that will help you do a variety of things, this type of saw is gonna be great for this. Uh, I wish I had known about this a long time ago. Again, uh, just a plug for the company, Made in the USA, Swag, check it out. Been working on it for the better part of almost two days. And I pretty much got it together. I just pulled it out so that I could assemble it as a unit, show how it's gonna look. And I still need to weld it all together. The uh, various components up by the exhaust manifolds are fully welded. The lower parts are not. They're just tacked into place to hold them in that particular shape. So I can take them off and uh, put a full weld. The areas where you see the clamps currently is where I'm gonna use a clamp. Uh, that'll give the uh, whole exhaust system a little bit of flexibility so it's not so rigid. And I've also got in the back here a support. Looks like that. Uh, that will go just underneath the tail end of each of the mufflers. I would have showed you a lot more of what I was doing to cut it all up, but with the truck not being on a lift, sitting on the ground, and me having to crawl under the truck, about 40 or 50 times, I'm taking measurements and test fitting a piece, uh, there's really no way I could video that. It's, it's, the kit is a universal kit, so between the 90 degree turns, the 45s, the 180s, just have to kind of figure out what works for your truck and your configuration. There's just a variety of different angles. For example, this piece right here, that I believe was a 90 degree bend and I simply cut it so that it would fit like that. And the reason being is the distance between these two outlets is closer together than these two outlets because of the width of the mufflers. You can't put them side by side and run straight pipes uh, from the X pipe directly back into the mufflers because the mufflers are too wide. So you have to do something to make one of the mufflers uh, turn out a little bit and give it some space. Okay, now we're gonna weld up the rest of it. Uh, I'm gonna clean it up and I'm probably going to be painting the bare steel parts. Uh, the mufflers I'll leave alone, and the X-pipe is stainless, I'll leave that alone as well. But the rest of the piping, since it's bare steel, if I leave it that way, it's gonna rust. So I'm gonna paint it the same as the exhaust manifolds here. It's gonna be a flat black, it's a uh, high temperature flat black, and it'll look nice, the, but the main reason is not to make it look pretty so much as just to keep it from rusting. Okay, this is the exhaust system as it's laid out before we install it. Everything's been welded and painted with high temperature black paint. And it looks pretty good, I'm pleased with it. The real question now is, will it all go back in the way it came out? Uh, before everything is tightened up though, we're just gonna get it in place and then uh, we'll begin tightening from the manifolds back. It's all installed. The passenger side went in with no problem. All the bolts are in and they're torqued appropriately. Uh, 11 foot pounds and then uh, adjusted to 18 foot pounds. The driver's side present, presented a bit of a challenge in that the last two bolts seemed like the uh, manifold bolts had been cross threaded a bit. So luckily I was able to get a tap uh, that's a M8 by 1.25 
and uh, go through all the holes, chase them out, and in the back ones, uh, they weren't too bad, but they were definitely going to be a problem if I tried to force a, a bolt in. While under the hood, went ahead and connected the battery, uh, really chopped up a fan shroud. Uh, that's an OBS fan shroud, at least what's left of it, so that at least uh, it kind of gives the general appearance of having, ha having one, and it covers up the, uh, the top of the radiator and the fans. Let's take a look underneath, see what it looks like. Starting from the back, the twin pipes, there's the exhaust hanger, suspends the mufflers in the back so that uh, they'll have a little movement, a little flexibility. And there's the X pipe. Let me get under the truck. And the bottom side from the mufflers going forward to the X pipe. The real challenge in uh, putting together all the tubing, the real challenge in all the tubing was putting together the tubing on the driver's side because it had to clear the cross member and not touch anything, but also go underneath the drive shaft and still not hang down too low, which it doesn't, which is which worked out nice. And then the passenger side is pretty much a straight shot forward, as you can see. It is ready to run now, except one minor thing was when I was messing with my plug wires uh, and removed. I installed them too quickly, had to remove one, and when I did, uh, the end of it broke. This little piece came out that attached to the plug and came out of this end, and it's useless now. So I've got seven plug wires. Uh, I've got a buddy across the street that's got some, and uh, he's going to bring one over to me when he gets home from work. And then we will put it in and see how she runs. Okay, we've got the new plug wire on, so she's ready to fire up. We'll see what happens. a relief to be able to turn the key and it starts. Now begins the sorting out process. You need to let it run for a little while and kind of see what happens uh, as it builds some temperature, see what works, what doesn't, if there's any funny noises. I don't want to drive it anywhere of any real distance until we get these issues uh, resolved because it may leave me stranded. It may not, That's the, that's, but that's just it, you don't know. So we're going to go through and sort through everything, make sure everything functions as it should. And we will catch you on the next video. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that little reminder button. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.